Hey everyone, in this video we are going to have a look over our previous GraphQL series and the server that we built. And what we are going to do is we're going to migrate our uh, custom uh, express driven GraphQL server to use GraphQL. Now GraphQL, I've already uh, done a short review on those, you can check up in the card above um, to listen and watch that uh, review. But I would like to migrate our GraphQL server to use GraphQL. And GraphQL is basically just a backend for GraphQL for developers to use. Uh, it's really cool, it's really fast, it's really nice and it's got some great engineers behind it. So I think instead of going ahead and building your own uh, application and your own server, you know, it's really great that there are these tools available. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just have a look at our existing uh, project, what we've done so far in the series, and then we'll see what we've got with GraphQL. So if we just have a look at our structure so far, so inside of our source directory, let's just have a look at the models. So we've got an event model. And this event model just takes a name and a date of the event. Very simple and very basic. We have a connection. Uh, it's that is li literally just connected to uh, Mongo and Mongoose. And that's pretty much all we've got going for the um, model. Now we do have a few queries and a few mutations. The queries, we have uh, a get all events query and we have a singular mutation as well. So our all events query, that just takes in a few arguments, first and skip. And that just allows us to paginate through our results. And then we have a resolver method, which again accepts some parameters, uh, gets our field ASTs and then calls up with the projection to Mongoose. And look, that's where we'll return the data that we need. If we have a look inside of our event model, we can see that this query type um, will yield back a event type. And again, it just has a resolver method here. Now the resolver method are things that you'll have to go ahead and create again, 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 if you want to have a, a custom uh, GraphQL server. But this is, you know, all this co code is pretty much just boilerplate, you're going to be doing the same kind of things. And if you're not really a back-end engineer, or this kind of thing kind of takes a lot of time and you really don't have that, if you're looking to just create a front-end for an application and want to have a self-hosted back-end, then GraphQL is a perfect uh, choice to do so. So you want to head on over to graph.cool and you want to sign up for an account and that will appear on the right-hand side here. When you're logged in, you just want to click go to console and this will take you to the console. When you first log in to GraphQL, they'll walk you through an amazing onboarding process, which will tell you about their UI and what certain things mean, uh, enumerators, types, and uh, queries, where the playground is, things like that. Uh, they show you a lot of that, so it's really cool and a really nice onboarding process that you definitely should uh, you should do. So this is uh, what it'll look like when you've completed that walkthrough, but I'm just going to click on this little arrow at the top here, and I'm going to add a new project. And we're going to call this event site. And uh, you can also choose the, uh, the one of the one of the regions here for your uh, AWS. So I'm just going to choose the EU because it has a, a really fast response time. And with that, we'll get taken to our blank console. And this is where we'll begin to write our schema. If you're conf confident and comfortable with uh, writing schemas, uh, if you've used uh, some of the Apollo stuff, just writing it out like this. Uh, using the build schema, then you can go ahead and just uh, type that inside of here. But I'm going to use the GraphQL interface because I think it's really nice. And uh, let's get started by doing that. And one of the nice things about this UI is you can literally just drag your mouse on a couple of the uh, bars here, and you can shrink the sidebar there just so you've got a bit more room to uh, to, to go and, and play with it. So let's have a look back at our uh, model uh, and our event type. So let's just have a look at the event type here. We have ID, we have name, and we have date. So back inside the console, I'm going to create a new event uh, type. We'll name it event. Uh, you can add a description if you wish. I'm just going to leave this blank. And by default, it will uh, yield an ID of GraphQL ID type, which is mandatory. Once that's created, we can then go ahead and create our fields. So let's create a name field, and that is going to be a string. And I'm also going to make this required by clicking required in here. Now, what you can do is you can set um, different types, and we'll come on to date time in the next 
field type that we create. Um, but there's a lot of things that you can do uh, inside of GraphQL. So pay attention to all the modals that pop up. If there's any unique constraints that you want to add or any default values, you can do all of that with inside of this uh, modal. So it's really nice and their interface is really, really sweet. So the next uh, type is digit. And you'll see here in our implementation, we were just storing it as a string and we were relying on our client side and server side to sort of um, computate the uh, input and uh, validate the output. Um, vice versa. So inside of here, we will create a date type and we'll choose date and time. And this is something that you can do if you want to add a new event. You can add the start date, the end date. You know, you could change this to start date uh, or just start. Um, let's change it to start and that will be uh, that, that for us here. Cool. We'll create that type. And then what we see here is we have our event type with ID and by default it also adds created at and updated at with the name and then our new start date time. Now you'll see this little exclamation mark at the end here, the bang period. This means that the field is required. Now actually the start time we don't want to be required. So um, it's completely optional. So let's just click optional and click update field. You'll see that bang has been removed and that is no longer required by default. Great, so there's actually, this has actually done quite a lot for us. Now, if we look back at the code that we've done here, um, we had to create an input type, and then we had an, an event uh, input type, and that specified what fields we accepted. Uh, there was quite a lot of magic. Um, well, quite a lot of the magic had to be sort of made. It wasn't really magic at all. Um, so yeah, uh, let's have a look at the query type event. You've got all of this here. You don't have to write this with GraphQL. Uh, they will do that automatically for you. And I'll show you how uh, what I mean by that. If we just launch the playground, it's just this little play icon here. Or if you expand the sidebar, you'll see the word playground. If we launch the playground and then we just uh, head on over to the docs here. And you'll see here we have a, a root query type. And if we click on that, you will see magically we have all events. We've got all files, all users. These are some system types. We've got all events meta. Uh, there's quite a lot of things going on here. And if we want to get the specific event, we can do that down here. So that's amazing. But before we can query any um, events from our uh, GraphQL database, what we must do now is actually add one. So you're probably thinking, okay, so the queries, we didn't have to define those. Do we have to define the mutations? And no, you don't. The mutations are actually made for us with GraphQL. And uh, that's pretty awesome. And that's kind of expected if you use things like Firebase or Parse. Those are kind of built in and, you know, the server generates those for you. And uh, just a short reminder is we also we also are using uh, subscriptions. So we'll come back to that and how we can use that with GraphQL. But that's what we're doing on these three lines here is we're just invoking our publish on our subscription. And then we're just resolving the, uh, the new event once it's been created. So let's, um, let's, let's go ahead and have a look at the docs again, and we'll see we have a root mutation. So we have one called create event, which accepts our name, which, is, which has a bang there, which means it's mandatory, and we have the start date time. So if we close up the docs and we just create a new mutation, and if we just start typing, IntelliSense will tell us that we have a create event mutation, and it requires a name, and we're just gonna call this GraphQL party because who doesn't want to attend a GraphQL party? Cool. So we, by default, we'll just re return uh, the ID and the name from our mutation. And if we click this play icon here on the right hand side, you will see that we have the event returned to us. And uh, yeah, so you can use that in the front end, which is, which is awesome. Let's go ahead and create a new event and we'll just call this launch party. I kind of like parties. Maybe maybe I'm giving too much away now. Uh, yeah, click play again, and we get launch party back. Awesome. So their interface here is just graphical, but it's kind of nice, and it's got a few more bits on it. What we can do at the top here is we can just click the plus icon, and we can open up a new tab. And inside of this tab, I'd like to just run a query. Now, you don't have to say query um, or anything like that. You don't, have, you don't even have to name your queries here. What we can do is just type in all events, and like in GraphQL world, we just begin to type out the fields that we want back. Now, we only inputted the name, but by default, we will get the ID back as well. 
So once we've typed that out, if we click the apply icon again, we will see we have our two events there. Now, if we remember back in our uh, project, inside of our query, inside of our all events query, we had first and skip, and that was for us to paginate. But you know, what if you want to do that with GraphQL? Well, actually, you can do that here as well. So we have first, and we'll grab one, and we'll skip none, and then we get the first event back. And we can change that to skip one, and then it'll get the second, which is awesome. So with that done, what we can now do is begin to look at some of the other features that come with uh, GraphQL. Now, just a quick reminder that is if you want to just grab this event, GraphQL allows us to do that by just passing in the ID, and we can grab that name back, and there we go, we've got that event back just by typing in the ID there. So that's really cool. And that, we haven't had to do anything. That's taken us less than five minutes to set up and we've got a fully uh, fledged GraphQL schema set up with queries and mutations. And if we open up Tox, you will see we have subscription set up as well, which is really, really cool. So subscriptions are built in and are part of GraphQL as well. And if we have a look at our subscription here, what we will see is we have, uh, we're requiring our socket and event type, and then we're subscribing for this listener here. Uh, but actually inside of uh, GraphQL world, what we can do is we can just type subscription and we can then say event. And the filter, what we want to filter on is we want to filter where our mutation in is, uh, we'll just pass in a, an array here of uh, enumerators. So we have created, updated, um, this can be whatever you like, and then we'll return. Uh, we return the node, let's it is, and then the name. And then the node here is literally just event and the name. So we can grab the ID as well. Okay, so if we just name our subscription new events, and we'll grab in the mutation type as well. So we can just uh, use that on the front end if we want to. If you want to update a comments list or an events list, we can if it's a create. If it's updated, we may want to find the, uh, the, the comment or the event and update the name of that's been updated. So we can do that. So what we can do is just press play and we'll see it's gone red, kind of the record and subscription kind of color. Um, and we see this little icon spinning around here. Now, if we go back to our mutation and we just uh, create a new event, and this time we'll call this uh, GraphQL subscriptions party and we click play that's created it it's returned the data to us here but if we check over in our tab here we will see that we have a new event and we can see the mutation type was created and here's the ID now if we also add in here updated we'll just pause and stop that if you click play again our query is running again, but if we head on over to here, I'm just gonna copy this code and I'm gonna create a new tab. And inside of here, I'm going to um, I'm going to update the name. So I've just gone over to the first tab again. I'm just gonna grab that ID and I'm just gonna uh, copy that and head on over to here. And where this says create event, I'm just gonna change this to update event. And I need to pass in the ID. So I'm passing in the ID here. And I'm going to create a new name and then uh, updated subscription name. Very creative, I know. And then we're literally just going to press play. And then the name has been updated and returned to us. And if we check back in our subscriptions, we should see that we have a mutation type of updated. We have our new name and our, I and our ID. So that is really, really powerful. Now you'll also see I use the update event here. And what you can also do is you can delete an event as well. Now, because our subscription is only listening to create and updated mutations, if we remove this event by pressing play, you'll see the delete event came back, the ID and the name that it was has returned as well. But if we check on over in our subscription tab, it's still listening, nothing's been added because it's only listened to these two mutations, which is great. Building this yourself uh, could take some time. And if you're um, on a tight schedule, you've got, you're in a sprint, you've got deadlines to meet, 
GraphQL is a great thing that you can use, and it's certainly something that you should be thinking of uh, if you don't want to waste time or energy, money, resources on building a developer background. Um, you know, just use it and give it a try if you're new to GraphQL. Uh, yeah, so cool, awesome. We've, we're all set up, we're ready to roll, and that's about it. One of the other cool things is functions, and functions are absolutely uh, unbelievable. What you can do with a function is, for example, if uh, you have a website or a um, billing, you know, if you have a billing platform and you, people are paying invoices or you have an events platform and people are attending events, subscribing to events, you can send messages to Slack or you could send them an email with their ticket. And that's what you can do with um, the GraphQL subscription. So they've certainly got a lot of information and tips and tutorials on how you can do that within their uh, website. But this video is just to give you sort of an overview on, on how you could migrate from a custom GraphQL server to a GraphQL powered server. And there's a lot of tools on here to get you set up and get you going. Uh, of course, they have a data browser so you can view those events that we created if you need to update the information just in a visual way. Uh, you don't want to use sort of the, the GraphQL side. Um, they have a really fully fledged permission system which I'll like to cover in, a, in an additional video and uh, some integrations as well. If you want to provide authentication for your application, uh, use a Algolia for search. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that they can do. So definitely check it out. That's graph.cool. And uh, follow along creating this video. And please check out my other video uh, on creating a custom GraphQL server if uh, if you'd like to learn a lot more about the, uh, the backend side to GraphQL. Have a great one, guys. Enjoy. Happy coding. Enjoy.